Hello, Balboa Scholars. It is so good to be with you all again. Um, I can't wait for the rest of our lesson. We have something really special planned for today. So with that, let's get started. Stand up if you're not already. Take a deep breath in. Let it out. Deep breath in. Let it out. One more deep breath in. Let it out. Big stretch. Like you just woke up. Roll your shoulders forward five times. Three, four, five. Roll them back five times. One, two, three, four, five. Pull your wrists around and your fingers just to feel loose. Crack your knuckles if you need to, or your fingers. Very good. One more deep breath in. Now reach up as high as you can. Stretch up onto your tippy toes. Get as straight as you can and then slowly go down. Touch your toes if you can. Feel a stretch in the back of your legs. And just hang there for a second. Now don't go up too quickly. Just slowly stand up. And when your head gets to the top, roll it around a few times in one direction. Don't go too quickly. You have to be nice and relaxed today. Go the other direction. One more deep breath in and then out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 One, two, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 zero. Hold it. Don't let it go. Let it out like you're letting it out through a straw. Massage your jaw for a little bit. Feel nice and loose. Massage your temples. And clap your hands together. Ah, just kidding. together and and with that please take a seat now moving on to zumba rhythm for zumba rhythm the only thing that we're going to be adding along with ta tt tiki tiki grasshopper cinnamon is we are going to add in Syncopa from last time. Here we go. 
as we can see, our first rhythm will be syncopa. So if this is our beat, it's going to sound like this. Syncopa. Ready? Go. Syncopa. Ti ti ta. Syncopa. Ti ti ta. Tiki tiki ti ti. Syncopa. Tiki tiki ti ti. Syncopa. Cinnamon grasshopper. Tiki tiki ti ti. Cinnamon grasshopper. Tiki tiki ti. Tiki tiki cinco pa tiki tiki. Good. So this one isn't as challenging necessarily, but as it speeds up, it's gonna get a lot harder. One, two, ready, go. Cinco pa ti ti ta. Tiki tiki ti ti cinco pa. Cinnamon grasshopper tiki tiki. Tiki tiki cinco pa tiki tiki. Make sure you don't rush through cinco pa. Even I want to, so stay in control. One, two, ready, go. Cinco pa ti ti ta. Tiki tiki ti ti cinco pa. Cinnamon grasshopper tiki tiki ti ti. Tiki tiki cinco pa tiki tiki. Awesome job. Okay, here we go. The extra fast one. One, two, ready, go. Cinco pa ti ti ta. Tiki tiki ti ti cinco pa. Cinnamon grasshopper tiki tiki ti ti. Tiki tiki cinco pa tiki tiki. Awesome job, everybody. Let's move on. The next activity will be your grade's episode of Rhythm Wars. Here we go. Fourth and fifth graders, we're going to learn a new rhythm today, and we're going to practice it in our episode of Rhythm Wars. So um, first of all, good job using Cinco Pa last week. I know it was review for all of us, but good job going through it. Um, this next rhythm that we're learning is somewhat related to it. If we have Cinco Pa here, it fills up two beats, right? This other rhythm also fills up two beats. Now, basically what we're going to do to get it is we're going to combine these two notes into one single note, this same length, and then we're going to have an eighth note at the very end, which looks like this. Boom. Now we have a quarter note with a dot after it. That basically stands for um, one of our eighth notes. A quick thing in case you don't know when it comes to how long notes are, um, and how many beats they fill up. Whenever you see a dot, it always um, means plus half the original amount of the thing that we're looking at. So here we have a quarter note, which fills up one beat, right? So the dot tells us that we need to add half of a quarter note, which is an eighth note. So this fills up one and a half beats. We're going to call this Tom T, like this. Tom T, Tom T. And you'll realize that the T in Tom T is the same spot that we have pa in cinco pa. All we have to do is just hold out the word or syllable Tom. Tom T, Tom T. So that was two of them in a row. Why don't we do four in a row a little bit quicker? One, two, ready, go. Tom T, Tom T, Tom T, Tom T. Good. Now let's do it a little bit faster. One, two, ready, go. Tom, T, Tom, T, Tom, T, Tom, T. Very good. Let's put it to practice.
For today's lesson, we are going to focus on conducting. In just a few moments, I'm going to show you a video that's a really good introduction and review to who a conductor is, what their job is, and how do they do it. Um, but I wanted to remind us and teach us a couple of key words or ideas um, that we might encounter in these videos. The first is baton. A baton is the tool that conductors use to make sure that whatever they do or whatever they gesture is able to be seen clearly by a very large orchestra over a large space. Now, it's worth noting that conductors don't always use a baton, that usually um, people like choral conductors, so any conductors that are conducting a choir or a group of singers, will not use a baton. They will just use their hands in the same way that you would use a baton. So. That's what this is. Our second word is time signature. A time signature shows us how many beats are going to be grouped together, both in how they sound and also in the way they're written out on a piece of music. The two time signatures we're gonna to refer to today are 4-4 four, four, and 3-4. To quickly review, 4-4 four, four organizes our music into four beats at a time and 3-4 organizes them into three beats at a time. We're going to take this idea of time signatures and we're going to apply it to this next very important idea, pattern or gesture. I'm going to use the word pattern today. Pattern refers to the way that a conductor moves their hand or the baton to indicate or to show how many beats are grouped together at a time. So if a piece, as an example, is in 3-4, they will do a gesture or a pattern that's based on three beats like this, one, two, three. If you're doing 4-4, four, four, it looks like this. One, two, three, four. But moving on to our next key idea, dynamics. We learned about dynamics in last week's lesson, so let's quickly review the things that we learned. From softest to loudest, it goes pianissimo, piano, mezzo piano, mezzo forte, forte, and fortissimo. Conductors use the size of their gesture to indicate how loudly or softly instrumentalists or singers are supposed to be playing or singing. Now we're gonna watch a video that takes all these ideas and shows us exactly, like I said, who a conductor is, what their job is, and how they do it. Hello and welcome to NPR's Class Notes. I'm Allison Young. Have you ever wondered what a musical conductor actually does? Well, I certainly have. And today, that's exactly what we're gonna look at. This person is called the conductor. The conductor is the person who keeps all the musicians of the orchestra and their different instruments together and on track. But a conductor does much more than that. What do the arm waving and all those other gestures mean? You might even wonder why a conductor is needed in the first place. If the musicians in an orchestra know the music in front of them and are following the score, can't they just perform on their own? Today we're going to meet a conductor and learn what she does. Her name is Sarah Hicks, and she's led some of the best professional and student orchestras in the world. She'll help us understand what's behind a conductor's leadership and how the back and forth she has with the musicians on stage creates great music. Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Sarah Hicks, and when I'm conducting an orchestra, there are so many things that I have to know and feel all at the same time. First and foremost, I have to know the music inside and out, what the notes are, how fast or slow they are, how soft or loud they are, and how they all add up together to create phrases and melodies. I also need to know the instruments the musicians are playing, what they sound like by themselves, what they sound like together, and what the effect is on me and the audience. In an orchestra, there are four families of instruments, the woodwinds, the brass, the percussion, and the strings. And since they're not all playing together at the same time, I need to know how to cue instruments to bring them in. Also important to know is the rhythm of the music, the time signature. Is it in 2-2? Two, two? Is it in 3-4? Four? 
is it in 4-4? My gestures tell the musicians what to do. And finally, since musicians are spread across the stage, I need to know how to get their attention all at the same time so we can start together, and when the music is ending, how to stop together. Let's talk about time signature here. So that music you just heard was by Engelbert Humperdinck from his opera, Hansel and Gretel. It was in 4-4. So let me do it again, and I want you to watch my hands. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You want to try it all together? Yeah. So take your right hand. I'll take my left hand. We're going to start up here. We're going to go down to the left, to the right, up, down, across, across, up. One, two, three, four. And that's your 4-4 four, four pattern. Let's try one more beat pattern. This time, not 4-4, four, four, but 3-4. And this is music from the Concerto for Orchestra by the Polish composer Witold Ludosławski. Did you notice a different beat pattern? So instead of four beats, there are three beats. And it looks something like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Want to try that? Yeah. yeah. Take your right hand, my left hand, down to the right, up. Down, right, up. One, two, three. And that's your three, four beat. It's fun, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But remember, as a conductor, everyone's eyes are always on you. And the musicians are counting on you to keep the time and to keep them together, and also to help them express what the music's all about. So does anyone have any questions? Yes, Gabby. How does the conductor show the orchestra when to play loud or soft? Two ways. I can make them play loud by making my gestures bigger, and soft by making my gestures smaller. Or I can raise my arm or lower my arm. Yes, Olivia. How does the conductor show the orchestra how to play fast or slow? Well, I show them with the speed of my beat. I can start at one tempo, and then I can speed up my beat to make them faster, or slow down my beat to make them slower, and they'll follow me. Henry. How do you let musicians know when to start playing? I usually give them a cue sometimes with my hand, sometimes with my finger, and sometimes if I know they're going to be too loud, with my whole hand like this. Sala. Who's your favorite composer to conduct and why? It changes every day. Sometimes it's Mozart because I love his precision. Sometimes it's Mahler because he's so emotional. And sometimes it's Leonard Bernstein because he's bubbly and boisterous. Yes, Gabby. What made you decide you wanted to be a conductor? Well, I was a concert pianist when I was in my teenage years. I hurt my hands and so couldn't play the piano, but my dad told me you can still hold a stick. And so I started conducting when I was 17. So now you know the conductor is not just some funny or unnecessary person waving their arms around. They're actually the leader. They guide the musicians to play together and make the best music they can. I wanted to give you another example before we get to our activity so that you could really understand what I think is maybe the most important part of a conductor's job. Not only are they supposed to be up there during a performance, but they also are in charge of making sure the orchestra or the choir, whoever they are conducting, um, creates a cohesive sound and that they all know what story they're trying to tell through the music. I want you to watch a video of one of the most famous conductors in the world. His name is Gustavo Dudamel, and he conducts the LA Philharmonic, which actually lives right here in Los Angeles. This is a video of their rehearsal, so they're all practicing this piece together, and I want you to see um, some of the things that he's doing in order to create an even better sound, because the thing is, the LA Phil is one of the best orchestras in the world. They could play almost anything really well right off the bat. But Dudamel's job, the conductor's job, is to take things from good 
and make them great. So I want you to see the ways that he does it. Everything in the point of justo. You know, justo means justo. <laughs> you know, eh, tan, tan, is, eh, is an allegro, let's say, is an allegro in control. I think that keep more this dramatic feeling holding the tempo. No in retardando or in pesante, but holding all the time the tempo. With the chance to, to be expressive there. Okay? A two before D, two before Dolorita. Uh, this, jam, pam, tan, tan, we have to be a little bit more, pam, pam, you know, they start, tim, pam, 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 pam. Two before D, three, and. From the second beat, second sixteen. Okay. Which letter is the complete passage? E. E. Yes, exactly. More bow, let's say. Ta -da -ka -da -ka -da -ka -da -da yeah. E, three, and. Hope you guys found that really cool. I love that part in the end when all of a sudden the strings play that part exactly the way that he wanted them to and it added this extra element, this extra excitement to the music, which was really cool. If you've enjoyed the videos that I've given you, there's one more I'm gonna put in the link below. This one is probably more for third, fourth, and fifth graders, but if you're in first and second grade and you really like this stuff, please watch it. It's very interesting. The link is below in the description of the video. Okay, we've talked too much and you guys have listened to a lot of things. So we're going to continue talking about conducting and practicing it ourselves in next week's video. I wanted to split things up just because we had so much to cover. So with that, stay tuned for next week and our very exciting activity. I'm super, super stoked to be able to do it with you guys. With that, have a wonderful week and I miss you all so much. Take care. Bye guys.